Hello, welcome to another How To Code Well YouTube video. My name is Peter Fisher, and in today's video, we're gonna look at the top five web development programming languages to learn in 2017. So this is my recommended list. And this video is really catered for those who, who want to learn web development and perhaps haven't learned web development before or a language uh, to make a website. And maybe it's their New Year's resolution that next year they want to create a website and uh, either for uh, work or for a hobby, perhaps. Um, this video is also um, uh, will also help people to decide which um, programming language to learn as a second language. So f they might, for example, already know Python or PHP and they're interested to uh, try out another language, put another language under their belt. Um, so stay tuned. Here are my top five web development programming languages to learn in 2017. Okay, number five is Ruby. So Ruby is a lovely, lovely uh, language. Um, it was built in uh, the mid 1990s. It's taken its origins from other languages such as uh, Perl and Lisp, but don't let that uh, put you off because Ruby is a very lovely language uh, to write and to read. Um, it does a lot of things correct in my opinion. Uh, in terms of the web, it has uh, Ruby on Rails. That's the framework of choice for Ruby. Um, now, the reason why it's at the back of the class is because um, there isn't perhaps as many um, there there isn't perhaps as many tools and as many um, hosting solutions for Ruby as other languages might have. And therefore, the barrier of entry is uh, is pretty high because you have to set up all of that stuff yourself um, if you were running, for example, a VPS or, or whatnot. Um, there are there are solutions out there, but uh, they're few and far between in comparison to other languages such as PHP and Python and Java and so forth. So um, that's why I've really put it at the back. But it's certainly a lovely language um, to to learn and uh, to write. Um, Ruby is also used in other web applications or, or tools that hang off of a website or a web system. So for example, Ruby can be used to deploy websites. So uh, creating Ruby scripts here. Um, so for example, tools like Capistrano are written in Ruby and Capistrano will, will allow you to deploy uh, your website onto different environments as well as run different tasks against those environments and so forth. Um, Ruby uses gems to um, manage uh, uh, for package management and in my opinion that's done pretty well. Um, so you don't necessarily need to uh, use Ruby to create your website but perhaps you could use Ruby to, to uh, uh, create some sort of scripting to script around the website. For example, importing, exporting bits and pieces, string manipulation, and so forth. Okay, let's move on. So number number four is Java. Now, Java is a very uh, well-known, well-used, battle-ready um, web application. Uh, sorry, web uh, programming language. Uh, it's used in many web apps. So, off the top of my head, I can think of Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins is a continuous integration um, tool that is written in Java. The beauty of Java is that it can be used on uh, pretty much any platform, uh, Windows, uh, Linux, Mac, and so forth, because it uses um, uh, JVMs, J Java Virtual Machines, that you can, you can run. So it's pretty platform agnostic, which is really cool. Um, so the same app can run on multiple platforms. Uh, Android also uses Java. Uh, Android is written in Java and and therefore there's a lot of job opportunities available. Um, like I said, it's been around for many years. In fact, uh, Java was first developed in the mid 1990s. Um, the idea really behind Java or one of the ideas behind Java is that it, it, it tries to use as few dependencies as possible, which means that um, uh, it's it's pretty self uh, self-efficient which is really good it uses object orientated programming languages uh, programming principles and uh, it's uh, widely taught in many universities as sort of a first language to learn 
So if you're if you're looking for um, uh, getting into the web development market as a for, for for jobs and so forth, then yes, I I do highly recommend Java. The reason why it's number four and not down the chain uh, in this list is perhaps it's it's it might have lost in my opinion it's it part of its sex appeal. It's not as 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 exciting as perhaps it used to be. Also, it's uh, very strictly typed, and therefore it's uh, it can be a bit of a bugger to um, to actually produce something that is working without having to go f through a big cycle of compiling and debugging and and all sorts of stuff. So, if you're new to to programming, then it can be a bit of a pain, um, but it's certainly worth it because you'll learn oh, so much, not just about Java, but also programming in general. And uh, that's why I've put it as number four. So the next one is PHP. Now PHP is uh, very widely used as a web development programming language. Um, as you can see here, it's used in uh, in excess of 20, oh, sorry, 200 million websites. Uh, websites such as Facebook, um, run PHP. PHP 7 was released um, quite recently and PHP 7 has now meant that the community or one of the one of the uh, one of the byproducts of PHP 7 is allows the PHP community to get over the the hump of PHP 6. Um, I'm not going to get into the reasons why PHP 6 the version was skipped perhaps that's uh, uh, should be done in another video, but PHP 7 is uh, kind of breathes some new life and fresh air into PHP. Um, there was a lot of people, um, a, a lot of talk about PHP is dead and so forth in the last uh, few years, but I, I do think PHP 7 has pumped new life into PHP. Um, and in doing so, we've got so many performance benefits and so many benefits to the language itself. It uses Composer as a means of package management. It used to use things like Pear and Plec, which in my opinion were just a big pain in the ass. Composer is so much easier um, and it's easier to, to, to learn and the barrier of entry there is, is far, far smaller than it used to. Uh, PHP was developed in 1994. Okay, so moving on to the top two. Da -da -da -da. So number two is JavaScript. So JavaScript um, has come a long way recently, especially with ES 2016, ES 6. This is um, the basically the new version of JavaScript. JavaScript is um, is the go-to client-sided language. Um, for all the browsers. So every browser uses JavaScript, and therefore the barrier of entry there is pretty non-existent. All you need to do is create a, a JavaScript file, then open it in your browser, and then use, say, a web um, a web browser uh, inspector. So we've got those inspectors in, in all the browsers, Firefox, Safari, Chrome, and so forth. And then, you know, you can do console log and de debugging and, and so forth. So Basically, every computer these days can run JavaScript. Um, every you know every laptop that you buy will be able to run JavaScript because it has a browser, and therefore the barrier of entry there is pretty non-existent. JavaScript is also used in other um, other devices, so uh, for example, mobile applications. You've got companies like Accelerator and um, other people like PhoneGap who who allow you to create. Um, JavaScript applications that can, um, in Accelerator's sense, compile down to uh, cr cross platforms, so iOS and uh, Android in their you know in their native cases. So you can use frameworks like AlloyJS and BackboneJS to create yourself really nice uh, mobile applications that can be used in uh, cross platforms. Now I know this is um, a web development talk, not a mobile applications talk, um, but um, with with all the, those technologies for the mobile applications, we've also got um, better um, frameworks for for just the web in general. So, for example, Backbone JS can be used in the web, and so forth. Um, in fact, that's where it well, that's where it uh, it started from. 
So the reason why I put this as number two and not number one is because in my opinion, I think the package management of JavaScript is a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the backside because um, uh, it's come a long way, yes, with NPM and all of that stuff. But it, it, in my opinion, it's got a long way to go. Um, there was a lot of incidences um, in the last few years where uh, uh, certain uh, web apps um, couldn't run because certain packages were not being maintained or br broke dependencies the dependency chain for other packages and so forth and perhaps all of this is growing pains because JavaScript is really you know it's, it's growing more um, perhaps all of those problems will then just sort of resolve themselves as, as, PA, as JavaScript matures more but at the moment I see that as a bit of a barrier especially for people who are trying to learn JavaScript and are scratching their heads as to why their application doesn't work because um, something down the chain in NPM is just broken and it you know it's an influence someone else's code has just influenced them and you know they're, they're wondering why on earth is this in such a state so that's why I really put it as number two but um, there's a lot of potential for JavaScript um, if you are looking for uh, a new a new industry to get yourself into if you're moving from web and moving into mobile then then use javascript because you know it's um, a lot of, a lot of the skills that you've learned from the web can be transferred over to mobile applications so um, i re certainly recommend it for that so without further ado my number one web uh, web development programming language to learn in 2017 is python so python is the most taught uh, programming language in the US schools. Now I say programming language instead of web development language because Python um, is used a lot outside of the web as well as inside of the web um, or against web systems in a similar sense I suppose as I mentioned uh, in Ruby and maybe Java. Um, so uh, Python is, uh, like I said, it's been taught in most schools, which means that there's going to be, in my opinion, a market in the next few years, uh, a job market um, for Python developers, because there's going to be lots of tools that are written in Python, lots of websites that are written in Python. There's going to be a lot of need for web development skills in Python. Python is also um, used a lot in IoT, so that's the Internet of Things, so smart devices and so forth. Um, uh, devices like uh, the Raspberry Pi use Python as a means of, you know, as a, as a learning tool for programming languages. So it's a very, very low barrier of entry there. You just pick up a very cheap device and you can start learning Python from that. And so Python was being taught in several schools all over the country using, or world indeed, uh, using a Raspberry Pi as their, as their device. In my opinion, it's a beautiful, beautiful language. Um, Python was uh, developed in the 1980s, mid or late uh, 1980s, 1990s. As I said, it's widely used in companies such as Google and, and other companies like that. So it's, um, it's a fantastic language to learn either as a new uh, new skill or like like I said a second language if you already know say PHP and you want an another language to learn then I highly recommend Python to learn okay so that's my top five web development programming languages to learn in 2017 if you think I've missed any out or if you think that um, in your opinion that this list is wrong it's in the wrong order then please uh, do point that out in the comment section below let's have a little conversation um, it'd be great to hear from you um, my name as as always is Peter Fisher you can hook me on Twitter which is P at PFWD I'll leave a link to that as well um, I've got lots of tutorials in PHP and MySQL and Docker and so forth. So uh, do subscribe to pick up those. I've got a couple more um, top five lists coming your way in the next few weeks. So do subscribe to get that. Like this video if you found it helpful and please do share it along. Thank you ever so much and I'll speak to you all again soon. Bye.